So everyone, uh, today we're going to do a real masterclass on day case hip replacement surgery. And with me, I have Mr. Arjuna in Bildenia, who is a orthopedic surgeon at West Middlesex Hospital and Chelsea in Westminster. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for joining us. Hi. So um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so we talk uh, a little bit about hips, I understand. Yeah, we will indeed. We will indeed. Uh, is there anything you want to add before we dig into in terms of who you are, what you do, and what you're bringing to the table? Um, yeah, just like you said, so my name is Arjun Muldenia. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon, so I'm kind of like a carpenter, I guess. I fix people's knees and hips. And I mainly work uh, in the NHS and the private sectors around central and mainly West London. Um, mm -hmm. So if you've got any yeah, burning questions or problems with your hips and knees, uh, hopefully some of this will, will, will address that, in particular the, the hip stuff and things to do, I think, with hip replacements and I think same day surgery is, uh, yeah. I think, what you wanted to uh, talk to me about. Actually. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so the reason we we are here, so to speak, is is just that to talk about same day or what or what can also be called day case hip replacement surgery, which is something that's becoming a bit more common certainly here in the UK, and certainly something that you have coming up um, as a as as a bit of a project at West Middlesex. So it'll be. You know, it'll be interesting to hear a bit more about the sort of things that you'll be discussing with your patients who are having hip replacement surgery more generally, but specifically what's different about having it on the same day or at least planning to have it on the same day and then, and then going home? Yeah, I think, I think it's different because traditionally, you know, hip replacement's been going on for a long time, uh, for decades now, and it's a really successful operation. It's definitely the most successful sort of orthopedic operation that we offer. And we think maybe the second most successful surgery we've ever invented. We, we always say that, and it's cataract surgery, if people are wondering. And that's meant to be the, the one that makes most, peop, make, uh, mo most patients the happiest. Um, so hip replacement's great, but traditionally, you know, if you have the surgery, you normally stay in hospital uh, for a number of days. When I was a junior doctor about 20 years ago, the patients would stay in for about one to one and a half weeks. Um, they would normally not be allowed to walk for a couple of days. And they certainly wouldn't be allowed to do complex movements like bending and twisting for, for many weeks. And, and as the years have gone on, I think we globally, the surgeons have got better, the anaesthetists have got better, the physios have understood things more, the implants and materials have got better. So we've managed to kind of shorten the length of time a patient needs to stay in hospital as the years have gone on. And that's mainly because um, the techniques um, have been a bit less invasive. So the surgeries maybe not been such a big big trauma to the body as it used to have been um and yeah we just got better at you know painkillers and all sorts of things and patients have got better they're more educated they're actually getting younger and younger now as well um ones that are needing this surgery so it's kind of brought us down where the length of stay certainly in the uk is maybe probably about three to five days and certainly at the west middlesex hospital where where i do most of my nhs work you know we were finding in the last 12 months most of my patients about 60% of the patients were going home within 48 hours. And that wasn't really with, uh, with any sort of push. They were just sort of well and were bored and wanted to go home. And about 15 to 20% of patients were going home within about 24 hours, um, as in after an overnight stay. So we thought the natural progression, in particular with COVID-19 in particular, and trying to keep people out of hospital, uh, was to see if we could get a proportion of patients safely home uh, the same day. And um, it's not a new thing. It's quite new in the UK. But there are some hospitals that have run it. There's a really good hospital in uh, Northumbria. and I've got a good uh, friend and consultant colleague there who's been doing it with his department for a bit. And they've kind of figured it out, the nuances. Um, and so we're trying to just push what we can do to the next level, use some of their ideas. Um, and as you probably know, you know, it's done a fair bit in some other countries like the US uh, in particular. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so you mentioned COVID-19 there, which is obviously a factor in, in, in all aspects of society and, and, and in practically everything we do in orthopedic surgery and beyond. Uh, but what are the other sort of benefits that are driving a move towards same day uh, hip replacement from the patient's point of view? Yeah, I think from the patient's point of view, you know, a lot of patients now don't want to be in hospital for too long. They want to get back home. They want to recover in their own kind of environment uh, with people like friends and family uh, to, to look after them you know, with all their, all their home comforts. That's one of the things. The second thing is, you know, even before COVID-19, hospitals are good places, but they are, they are kind of dangerous places in some ways because they're full of people who, who are ill and sick and sometimes have uh, various ailments, some of which, you know, um, can catch, you know, like various infections. So, so it's always good to get people out. The data from a lot of studies, 
you know, shows that there's an association with sort of reduced complications, uh, you know, with sort of staying in hospital for a shorter length of time. We're, we're not really sure what that's about, but it does seem like the longer you stay in hospital, you maybe don't do as well for various reasons, and the quicker we can get you home safely, you tend to do well. So there's a number of reasons why that association might be there, but, but certainly the, the stats point to, to the fact that if we can get you up and home quicker, you tend to do well. Some of that's because if we get you home, I guess, you're, you're mobilizing, you're trying to walk and move about. And we know that if you're walking and moving after surgery and starting your rehabilitation, again, all the sort of various small risks that can happen with a hip replacement, um, you know, the risk of those things happening goes down, basically. Okay, okay. Well, so it sounds like there's certainly some compelling arguments to, to, to at least certainly aim for uh, a day case or same day procedure. Uh, but how is it different from, from the patient's point of view in terms of uh, what they need to know and what they need to do or perhaps not do both before and after surgery? Yeah, so I think if a patient's normally staying in for, let's say, two to three days in a hospital or, or, or one to two nights even, you know, the difference is that, you know, all that support and backup of the sort of the, the staff in a hospital, the nursing care, physios, the occupational therapists, the junior doctors, the consultants, the pharmacists, you know, they're, they're technically not there, are they? So, so one of the, the issues would be that if, you, if you're going to go home, you're going to make sure you're safe and you're supported and that you feel confident to, to, to do so. So we, we have to try and figure out a way where we can uh, recreate some of that support. And, and the thing is now, you know, as we move forward, you know, in our lives, there's tons of innovations that we have at home. Uh, or with our phones, you know, with our laptops, the various smart devices. So, you know, we can definitely use some of that stuff in other areas of your of your world to to, to help us and help recreate safety at home. So, one of them would be would be like an app, and and you know, we know you uh, you in particular have got a, a great kind of app that can that can help us track you know the patients and keep in contact with the patients whilst they're at home, seeing how their like their pain scores are, like whether they're getting hitting the right targets. We can also do Zoom, like we're doing today, we can do a, a Zoom or a video consult with the patient uh, whilst they're at home the next day to see how they are. We can look at their wound, for instance, they can show us the dressing with video, video chat. You know, we can um, kind of have patient, um, we can have sort of physios, occupational therapists, support services visiting the patient at home. Uh, so sometimes where traditionally you'd have to be in hospital for certain treatments, a lot of stuff can now be done in the community. So we can definitely sort of port things away from the hospital to home, but obviously there's got to be a balance, it's got to be safe, and the patient has got to be happy with it. But overall, I think for the right sort of patient, um, if the operation's done in a certain way, uh, you know, it, it, it's a great option, I think. Yeah, 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 interesting. And, and I guess it's worth flagging that, you know, in any case, for anyone out there who's watching this now, who's been booked in for a same day or day case procedure, you know, if there is a reason to, of course, you know, you, you, you can spend another night in hospital or, 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 you know, get the support as needed. But it's about setting an expectation, about setting aims, uh, and, 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 and really establishing that as something that both you as a patient in this case and, and the team around you are working towards. Absolutely, you've got, to be, you've got to be comfortable as a patient with your treatment anyway. So you've got to be happy before you have any treatment, especially an operation. Yeah. You know, you'd be happy that you're having your operation, you understand the risks and benefits and the alternative options. Yeah. And in particular, if you're having a procedure where you're having what's called enhanced recovery, where you're, we're trying to get you recovered and, and, and home faster, you've got to buy into it. And, uh, and if you're not happy with it, you, you know, you don't have it, as simple as that. And, and your clinicians won't be kind of forcing that on you, um, uh, you know, it's as simple as that. And also, likewise, once you're recovering, you stay in hospital for as long as you need. You know, if you need to be in a hospital, I don't know, for nine days for, ver for any particular reason, that, that's what we're going to do because we're, 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 your, we're your team and we're here to look after you. So I definitely don't think anyone should worry about that. I understand why they might. But, you know, we're going to do what's right for each patient on a kind of individual bespoke basis, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and on, on that note, though, are there, any, are there some cases where perhaps planning for uh, a same day operation might not be the appropriate thing to do? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're, we're going to kind of figure that out as we go along, you know, certainly in our, in our kind of project at the West Middlesex Hospital. But going on what's being done in other hospitals in other units and in other in other health systems it, it seems like the, the may, maybe the safest type group of patients would be the, the slightly younger and fitter cohort it doesn't have to be 
that you're young, but I would say fit, you know, so what we'd say, people that maybe don't have major diseases that affect their heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, people that maybe aren't too overweight, so they've got good BMI, if you like, people that are motivated, uh, people that are really good with uh, engaging with physiotherapy and their exercises, and people that kind of are positive and want to want to do it. So I think that type of patient will, will do best. There are definitely patients where probably it may not be the, the best option for them, uh, and um, and then we you know we wouldn't really suggest that pathway um, for them. So it's probably not for everyone, but you know as we get better at it, and certainly as the the network around the treatment or the support system around the treatment gets better, we can probably you know, increase the catchment of patients we think might be suitable for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and, and of course, as as with as with everything, and you know, this video and all the other joint school videos, you know, really the 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 plan for you as an individual who's watching this video will be something that is you know put in place for you, especially with you know between you and your surgeon and other members of the team. And so, what we're doing here is really sort of touching on some kind of higher level trends and the, some of the key points around hip replacement surgery, and in particular when aiming to have it sort of as a, as a same day procedure. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I think everyone's treatment, it's really hard in medicine, you know, as you know, um, to kind of box people. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, this is relatively general, but each patient, you know, has an, their own kind of personalized treatment plan. That, that's just how medicine is. And uh, that's the beauty of it, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. But while trying to steer that kind of general course to kind of sum things up for those who are watching this right now, who are booked in and getting getting ready for a hip replacement as a day case or same day procedure, what would be your key tips for yeah for for, for anyone who's sort of getting ready for the for this procedure? Yeah, so first of all, like congratulations, like be positive. You know, it obviously means you you've selected it and you've been selected because you are someone who your doctors and, and extended team feel can do this you know you, you can do it you can undergo this surgery and you're going to recover quickly and you're going to get up and you're going to start moving and just get better you know so that's the first thing is so well done in terms of things you can do i mean i would say that you know there's a lot of good online resources like the joint school uh, out there there's some great sort of youtube videos uh, with surgeons like me talking about the surgery but you know most surgeons like me have never had the surgery. So, so the best thing to, the best people to listen to, uh, or to, or to read from, or to watch videos from is other patients, you know, other patients who've been through your journey. You know, there are people now, you know, blogging and blogging about their own stories, putting things on Instagram. I would try and get in contact with, with previous patients that that's the thing. They're the ones, but of course there's lots of good input from physiotherapists who look after, uh, patients, you know, pharmacists, nurses, um, you know, knee statistics. It's a, it's a big team. So, so I think educate yourself. Sometimes when you get a lot of information, it can be confusing. But lots of surgery, you know, surgeons are, are really difficult to understand because we all do things quite differently. Um, it's a bit like you know, getting um, I don't know some building work done or your loft conversion, and three different you know builders give you different quotes, and it's confusing. We're we're really similar and annoying in that respect. So, so I think the more you read, sometimes you can get a bit confused. But I would say you know, make sure your treatments with a with a team and a unit. You know, who've got a good track record and whose patients sort of recommend them. You know, have a look around. Like reviews are good. Uh, I think, you know, if I was going to get a meal, you know, went the other night. You know, looked on TripAdvisor, great reviews. So have a look. I think reviews are good. It's it's other patients. So, but in terms of what you can do, I think just think about have someone at home, okay, to help look after you. That's the first thing. Um, make sure you've done your rehab or your prehab, so your exercises beforehand. Be as strong and as fit as you can before the surgery, because that's going to help. Make sure you take a lot of protein um, before and after the surgery. So you want to build up protein and lots of carbohydrates. So take your calories on board. It's not the time to go low calorie or lose weight. You want to you want to heal up after the surgery. Painkillers that you're going to need because it will hurt. The operation will be fine. You'll be fine for hours and hours after surgery. But once all the kind of low kind aesthetics wear off, you, you know you're going to feel it. You know there's no doubt about it. So you're going to be sent home with tons of painkillers, which will really help you but they're going to make you feel constipated and nauseous. So make sure you take laxatives. It's a really weird thing to take, especially when you're a younger patient. You've got to take them. You don't want to wait till you're bunged up. Take those laxatives. Take your anti-sickness meds before you feel sick. That's the best thing to do. Drink loads of water and then eat stuff uh, also that keeps you regular, as they say, you know, like whatever, bananas, prunes, stock up your fridge. Um, yeah, and then just recover and get better and then get used to enjoying your new life with your new 
pain-free hip that's going to make you do all the stuff you want to do that you couldn't do before. It's, it's exciting times. To yeah, be indeed. indeed. Thanks, George. I think that, I mean, that's a fantastic run-through of, uh, of, uh, of, of, th of things to consider. And I really, and I think what's core there is focusing on the positives uh, and also absolutely, as you say, seeing what the experience has been for other people. And indeed, you know, for those watching this, there are other videos here on the channel where we've uh, interviewed people who have had hip replacements and there's more coming up uh, and, and, we'll, and we'll be adding a couple of videos and even more videos with, with other members of your team kind of touching more specifically on this day case hip replacement pathway. So fantastic. Thanks, thanks for joining us, Arj. This has been a really, really, uh, like, really, really good masterclass, I think. I, I really think people will find it useful. And of course, for those of you watching this, you know, as ever, subscribe, let us know what you think. If it sparks any questions, just add them in the comments below or send them in. And as ever, we'll, we'll dig into it uh, at an upcoming video. So thanks very much. And to everyone out there, all the best. Take care. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.